Okay, this video is uh, chapter seven of the book, How to Pro Poor Man's Way to Prevent Dementia, uh, written by me. The chapter <clears throat> is focused on fructose. I recently gave a lecture called The Debate About Fructose, where I'll go into more detail about fructose, and I'm gonna go here. Uh, but this is just, you know, what's sort of, you know, from the book. A um, couple key points. All right, so here's the picture of fructose, and the unique thing about fructose after you eat a meal is that if you drink a bolus of fructose, like with high fructose corn syrup in it, almost all of the fructose goes right into the liver, and it is going to get processed by a glycolysis, the main metabolic pathway, anaerobic pathway for processing sugars, but the thing about it is it enters at the midway point, at the three carbon phase. Fructose and glucose, here's glucose coming in, um, they're both six carbon sugars, okay? Six carbon sugars, but in the middle of the pathway, it gets split in half into a three carbon sugar, and then there's very little regulation in the second half of the pathway. The beginning of the pathway at the six carbon phase is tightly regulated, and this is the key enzyme, PFK, phosphofructokinase. And the liver is all about handling glucose. The most important thing the liver does is make sure you have the right amount of glucose in the blood to keep your brain functioning optimally. So everything to do with glucose in the liver is tightly regulated. And the liver will only run glucose through glycolysis if it needs energy, okay? Um, versus this fructose kind of comes in, like after high fructose corn syrup, as a bit of a surprise, you know, there's not that much liquid fructose in nature. And nowadays people get these big gulp energy drinks full of uh, fructose. And when you when you guzzle it, when you drink it in a, in a processed food, the fructose has no fiber. It just comes in zip, as a big bolus. And the liver is not ready for it. It enters at the three carbon phase to glycolysis. And then it's very rapidly converted into pyruvate. That's a three carbon, uh, you know, carboxylic acid product of the sugar metabolism, and that gets made into acetyl-CoA, a two-carbon product, and the two-carbon units, are those are the building blocks to build fat. So the liver basically says, hey, I don't need to burn this for energy right now. Why did this happen? Just store it as fat, store it as fat. So that's why ingesting these uh, high fructose corn syrup sweetened energy drinks and uh, other drinks and whatnot, they are very prone to producing a fatty liver. And as the liver becomes more fatty, there's also released into the blood more triglycerides, that's a type of fat, and more very low density lipoprotein. So it increases blood lipids. It'll also uh, predispose to the person becoming fat. One of the reasons for that is when you eat glucose, for example, it's going to go into your blood, it's going to raise your blood glucose level, the pancreas is used to this, it releases more insulin into your blood, the insulin helps the glucose to be taken into the skeletal muscle where it's stored as glycogen, okay? Plus you get some satisfaction of hunger uh, after you eat the glucose and the insulin comes up, okay, and everything else related to regulating hunger. You're going to decrease your ghrelin a little bit. All right, so what I'm saying here is that we're designed to process starches and uh, glucose in our blood versus the fructose. We can eat quite a lot of fruits before our hunger is satisfied. It doesn't satisfy hunger as quickly because you don't get that bump up in insulin you know, from the fructose as much as you do like when you ingest something like a starch with the glucose. So the point is that you can overeat fruits and it's a much bigger deal when you overeat high fructose corn syrup sweetened things. Again, like you drink those calories. If you eat a fruit, there's not that much um, fructose in a fruit per serving. Okay, let's say in the ballpark of five grams or something. There's um, also other things in fruit that prevent it from being much of a problem. There's vasodilators in there. Potassium, P for plants, P for potassium. There's also uh, magnesium from plants. Those are vasodilators. They'll help, help prevent some of the negative effects of fructose that are generated by the uric acid, which is a vasoconstrictor. Um, in addition, you got antioxidants there, things like vitamin C, they help excretion of, um, of the uric acid. So what also happens is the fructose, because it's not regulated, can very quickly, it first comes into the liver cell, it gets phosphorylated. That's a typical thing. Same thing happens with glucose to phosphorylate it because that puts a charge on it so it can't exit out the plasma membrane of the liver cell. But because the fructose can rapidly undergo this in an unregulated way, it can deplete the ATPs. Then after ATP is used to give a phosphate, ATP is adenosine triphosphate, you get ADPs, adenosine diphosphate. And these will then um, sometimes be progressively metabolized to uric acid. 
The relevance is uric acid goes into the blood. It causes the mild stimulation of the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, SANS, you know, the stress fight or flight type of system. Um, it also is a bridging molecule, stick red blood cells together, make the blood thicker. It also causes, a little bit gets into the blood, causes increased sodium absorption, absorption from the gut, increased sodium retention in the kidneys. So it raises your blood sodium. So all of these things here together, sympathetic activation, bridging RBCs, increased sodium getting into the blood, they cause more hypertension. And that's an important point because hypertension is a major risk factor for atherosclerosis. Okay, and then atherosclerosis is a major risk factor for dementia. All right, um, the next point is that it also inhibits endothelial nitric oxide. The uric acid does that. And you're, normally when you have insulin after a meal, it, it vasodilates your muscles a little bit so it can open up the capillaries in the muscle because the big thing insulin does after you eat a meal, it's called postprandial, is to get the glucose to go into your skeletal muscle cells so it can be stored as glycogen. If you can't open up those muscle cap capillaries because uric acid is inhibited, enos is endothelial nitric oxide synthase to make nitric oxide to vasodilate your muscle capillaries, then you can't get the sugar into the muscles. You can't get the glucose into the skeletal muscles. That's called insulin resistance when insulin's not able to do its job. So blood glucose levels become elevated. Uh, things that cause insulin resistance they make diabetes worse. They can cause diabetes. Usually it's excessive dietary fats the main cause of, in, of, of diabetes, but you get additional insulin resistance by having increased sympathetic activation and by having inhibition of endothelial nitric oxide synthase. So it can't do its job effectively. So that's causing insulin resistance contributing to worsening diabetes. Well, diabetes is a major risk factor for cognitive decline and dementia. Because the insulin is not able to exert its, uh, its effect through the usual amounts, increased insulin gets produced. Well, when you get increased insulin in the blood, it's called hyperinsulinemia. There's an enzyme called insulin-degrading enzyme that's used to remove the insulin from the blood. It has high affinity for insulin, but it also removes beta amyloid from the blood. So when this insulin is made in finite quantities, when that's used up, uh, removing the hyperinsulinemia, you're less able to remove the beta amyloid protein. And some people believe that that contributes to uh, worsening cognitive decline. The whole beta amyloid story is a much bigger separate topic. But I'm just giving you here three major ways that fructose can contribute to cognitive decline. Insulin resistance through the excessive uric acid production and through the elevated blood lipids contributing to this process and the obesity related to this process. Um, fatty liver is sort of like diabetes of liver, pre-diabetes, diabetes of liver, because that's going to now affect how the liver can manage glucose. We're not going to get into all that right now, but it's all bad. Okay, um, And this idea of increasing sodium resorption from the gut is a bit of a vicious cycle, which is common uh, with bad diseases. Now, you'll sometimes hear, oh, well, you know, Dr. McDougall gives a great lecture on uh, preventing diabetes, and he talks about, he says, oh, well, sugar's not the main cause of diabetes, and when you talk about sugar, people are usually talking about white sugar, and like, and, you know, that sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose 50-50. High fructose corn syrup is often 65% uh, fructose. It also often has mercury as a contaminant in it. You don't want to eat that stuff. Um, so it's not the same thing. And like I said, high fructose corn syrup, sweetened drink, has none of the good stuff that fruit has. Fruit is actually pretty good food, but unless you exercise, you do have to be a little bit careful about eating too much of it because it doesn't satisfy hunger as quickly. And I've had that experience, like I don't know if I mentioned this already, that you know, if I'm eating apples, I found that I could very quickly eat 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 apples. I'm like, why is it so easy to eat this versus when I'm eating a big bowl of starch, it, it takes effort. When I'm eating potatoes, it takes effort. It's not that easy to overeat. Okay. All right, I'm trying to see if I got anything else. Oh, um, well, I just threw a few things in here. If you eat, the, I, I'm a big believer in you should eat organic if possible. Um, there's other things in processed food that make people really fat. If you ever heard of the island of Nauru, you know, I think that's off near Australia and, and whatnot, they were an island where the people were sort of very uh, healthy. They kind of looked like the Pima did before they got corrupted by the SAD diet. Anyways, they had a lot of uh, phosphate in their land and some companies came in and gave them money to take over their land to mine it for phosphate and then they fed everybody processed food. They rapidly became the fattest people in the world at the island of Nauru, N-A-U-R-U. Okay, uh, so what I'm saying is processed food makes you fat for multiple reasons. Okay, you sweeten something with high fructose corn syrup like we said. The fructose doesn't 
cause satisfaction of hunger as quickly as like a glucose starch food would. Um, in addition, the glyphosate, it's a long story. We're not getting into all the toxicity of glyphosate now. That's associated with the chemical Roundup and sprayed on like the processed food, non-organic soy. That's really associated with uh, fatty liver. And this lady right here, uh, she has given multiple lectures on that subject. Um, we talked about the corn being sprayed with atrazine. That's another estrogenic herbicide. Estrogen is a fat storage hormone, causes people to gain weight with the idea that, you know, estrogen levels go up when a woman is pregnant to help her uh, store energy for the baby by gaining weight. Um, it's often sprayed with mercury. That's toxic and inhibits mito uh, mitochondrial function. Okay, so the point is processed foods are designed to make people fat, also to make them infertile, and also to make them stupid. So you really want to avoid this. And there's no way to win the game with processed foods. The only way to win the game is to avoid them. And there's lots of tricks about MSG. You know, MSG means monosodium glutamate. MFG means manufactured free glutamate. But really inside our bodies, they're about the same thing in the sense that all our body cares about is a glutamate. Glutamate's over 90% of the neurotransmitters in your brain. It's an excitatory neurotransmitter. And the reason why it's added to food is it's a flavor enhancer. It makes stuff taste good. As a matter of fact, it gets people to be addicted to foods. And they'll even titrate it in their research, the food companies, to where do they get the optimal, it's been called the bliss point, the combination of MSG, sugar, salt, and frying. And right where the person loves it the most and is addicted to it, that's what the company will put into their food. So people get addicted to all these processed foods. And the tricky thing about the MFG, manufactured free glutamate, is you can take a protein. And like people talk about gluten, oh, gluten allergic or gluten sensitive and all this stuff. Big problem with gluten is the name gluten kind of comes from having a lot of glutamate, okay? And when you process it a lot, you break up the original protein into individual amino acids. And those amino acids, 30% of the amino acids in gluten are glutamate. So this is a lot of glutamate to be ingesting. And when it's free, that means the protein's already been broken up before your digestive system has to do its job on it. You get this rapid bolus of glutamate. Um, and that makes people addicted to the foods. And you can also overeat for that reason and get obese. Plus, we'll talk at a separate time about the excitotoxic effects on the brain, but it's bad. I came to the conclusion I won't eat any processed food, none of them. The only thing I'll eat that's processed is I'll eat single ingredient oatmeal and single ingredient quinoa. Okay, I won't eat anything else because there's so many issues with all the processed food. That, that's a topic for later, but it's you want to avoid them. Okay, uh, I told you that excess uric acid can function as a bridge, bridging molecule, sticking the red blood cells together, overcoming the zeta potential, and thus it has a prothrombotic effect. We talk about it inhibiting endothelial nitric oxide, being a vasoconstrictor, that's bad. Of course, everybody knows that when the levels get real high, they can also cause gout, a type of painful inflammatory arthritis. Um, All right, so, okay, here's one paper about a causal role for uric acid in fructose-induced metabolic syndrome. Okay, and this, this is just what we were talking about, that fructose will cause increased uric acid in the blood, and then the uric acid will inhibit nitric oxide uh, being released into the blood, and then insulin can't do its job because it can't open up the muscle capillaries. Okay, so, anyways, the, the whole point of this, now there's the next chapter already, the whole point of this talk here was just to say that you really want to avoid high fructose corn syrup, and uh, you really want to avoid all processed foods. If you have a choice, you know, if you can get your hands, what you really want to eat is low fat, low sodium, 100% whole foods, 100% plant foods, 100% organic with no oils. That's sort of key parts of the best diet. And uh, so, and high fructose corn syrup, of course, much, much worse than fruits. Fruits in small amounts, I think, are good, but you do have to be careful about overeating them. And, you know, McDougall makes that point, too. He talks about sugar not being the cause of diabetes, and I think he's specifically referring especially to sucrose. And he does mention that Kempner would give his patient sugar, but when Kempner was giving his patient sugar, it was especially in the context of patients who weren't able to maintain their, their weight on the rice diet. So they needed more calories, and he liked giving them uh, sucrose because there's no nitrogen in there, so it doesn't do anything to stress the kidneys, okay? That's a big deal. Animal proteins also, it's bad not just because it puts a stress on the kidneys, causes inflammation, which additionally stresses the kidneys. It also is anabolic, and it also activates mTOR. It accelerates aging. There's a whole bunch of problems with it. So Kempner could just give them sucrose calories, but 
Um, that's a whole other thing. Getting into the Kempner is a whole other topic. I just wanted to make the point is you do want to avoid high fructose corn syrup in a, in a big way. But, you know, small amounts of fruit are okay. And you can eat lots more fruits, especially if you're exercising, you can get away with it. And if you're young, young people can get away with stuff. But as you get older, you got to be careful, I think, about it. So I, I, I understand why he kind of limits that. And, and Chef AJ does the same thing. She won't eat tons of fruit uh, for those similar reasons. So anyways, hope that was helpful.